Hi guys, so something different today. A little bit of housekeeping before we go on any further. If you enjoy this video, find it useful, then don't forget to uh, give us a some thumbs up, like and subscribe. Um, we've got to play the algorithm if we want to keep going. And with that, let's get into this. So I've been asked about this a couple of times and I've seen it mentioned in the media of late. So I thought I'd quickly cover two, in quotes, new broadband technologies you might run into. The video is quite UK centric and we'll be dealing with BT, so your mileage may vary depending on your country. The services I'm talking about are so ADSL and so GIA. Now I say they're new, but they're not new at all. All these acronyms mean is we found a way of uh, charging you the same money for less. Um, what we've actually done is taken a bit off. So in the UK, in most countries, you pay telephone line rental and then you pay broadband on top of that. Your broadband fee doesn't cover both. Given very few people use that phone line, it seems unfair. In fact, I don't think any of my customers actually use the analogue line at this time. For many years, this has been a bone of contention, but as businesses are making money off this setup, it's not going to change. However, with BT saying they want all analogue PSTN lines gone by 2025, and I believe this does include um, ISTN as well, there's now a need to do something about it because it's not in their interest to leave things as it is. Yeah, sorry, not sorry, not a BT fan here. So we've invented two new connection types, so ADSL and so GEAR, which is basically broadband delivered without an attached voice circuit. So how does this work and what does it mean? Let's take a look. This is a typical ADSL service. Your broadband is supplied by the DSLAM at your local exchange, mixed onto your analog line with your POT service by a combiner at the exchange, and then shoveled down the wire to your home. Your microfilter separates out the DSL signal and voice signals and your router provides your broadband. VDSL or FTTC, fibre to the cabinet, is a little different. We want more speed so this system moves the equipment closer to you. It lives in those little green roadside cabinets and your incoming li analogue line does the same thing as the ADSL service, just closer to the door. The copper line coming in from the exchange is mixed with the VDSL signal from the DSLAM in the cabinet and then it's passed down the last mile of cable to your home where it enters another microfilter and is split out to a voice and a DSL signal to feed your modem. It's a simple reliable system and one of the reasons that we use this for events is you get a free voice carrier that requires no power at the far end to work. As long as our cabinets or BT cabinets have power then your phone will work. doesn't apply if you're using a cordless phone or a phone that needs external power but most will at least dial without having power. This is important and I'll touch on why shortly. So ADSL um, or SOTAP, which is Single Order Transitional Access, is more or less the same as ADSL. All we're doing here is taking the voice loop out, so all that is delivered over that phone cable to you is the DSL signal. The combiner and filters, I believe, stay at the exchange. Uh, there's no need for them to stay at home, but I think it's a case of they've always been there and it requires extra effort to get rid of them. Um, from the point of view of your home connection, you might benefit from taking that filter out, but it does take out any audio interference and if they forget to isolate your line. The saving over ADSL here isn't entirely clear. The copper loop doesn't change, it's still there, they're just not providing a phone service. However, some providers do provide an IP line over the DSL signal, so there's still the expense of providing that, that line, or at least providing that phone number. Um, where they do this you get a new issue as well if your power goes out your phone service does too remember as we've just mentioned your phone unless it's cordless or needs a power supply is powered from the phone line not your main supply your power can be off but your phone should still work so in an emergency where the power is lost you can still call for help so GIA, or single order generic ethernet access is more or less the same thing your broadband comes from your local FTTC cabinet now without a voice circuit. The saving here is more clear cut now as the provider doesn't have to worry about all those nasty copper lines to the cabinet from the exchange. There's a definite cost advantage to doing it this way and the VoIP service if provided can be pulled out, stuffed on its own fibre and shipped out or left on the main backbone fibre. Otherwise it's the same as the SOA DSL service. In both cases, as I've already mentioned, if you're on these service you need to make sure you can call for help be it a mobile phone or a VoIP phone, 
and as I've mentioned there are some providing a VoIP service either via an IP phone that they supply or an FXO port on the router. And these do both rely on local power though so if you move to such a service you might want to consider battery backup for your router and your phone. You can get some normal off the shelf UPS to do this and some routers do have a battery capability. Some small 12 volt systems just for routers are also available which will power an FXO connected phone or a suitably IP rated IP phone. But be careful, most IP phones are 5 volt or 48 volt supplies, not 12. Anyway, I hope this explanation helps and is useful and until next time, take care, bye.